tutorial on mixing drums in a bit more depth. I'm going to be using Superior Drummer most of the time with this. The reason for that is I think Superior is the best all-round VST drum program you can get on the market at the moment. There are maybe a couple of others that are up there with it, but uh, some have got maybe better cymbal sounds or better tom sounds. And I think Superior has the, the overall best of everything. The quality of the raw sounds is brilliant. And uh, they are very raw. It can be quite hard to mix a good kit together, but I think that's a good thing because it really gets you having to understand the way a real drum kit is mixed to sound good. Now the presets they provide are not great, so part two of this episode I am going to be providing you with a metal preset that I've created using the Avatar default kit that comes with Superior. I'm also then going to cover metal preset I've created using the Metal Foundry add-on that you can buy, which gives you a much bigger library of metal style drums, but again their, their own presets aren't that great, so uh, i show you how I go about creating one. Um, I do this using their own inserts as well. Uh, Superior does come with its own EQs and compressors and what have you, which uh, I wouldn't advise using if you've got something like Waves, but uh, they can be pretty good to use and again give you a good insight on how to mix a drum kit properly. So first of all though I'm going to cover very quickly something that uh, is probably the most popular question that I've, I get asked in any of my tutorials, and that is how do I send all of my outputs for the different instruments into my DAW so that they're on separate tracks. This process of sending all of the instruments to their own individual tracks is called activating all outputs. Uh, you'll see uh, one point quickly down the left hand side as always I've got links to this uh, topic and all the other topics of the episode so if you find you already know about something please use those navigation buttons to skip forward and go past anything you think you, uh, you already know or you're not interested in. But uh, activating all outputs, now this works the same whether you're an easy drummer or superior drummer and probably in all other types types of programs to be honest. In Superior Drummer what you want to do is along the output, these yellow outputs here, you can see they're all set to 1, 2 at the moment. Now that means that if I get uh, something playing you can see down here there's a 1, 2 output that Cubase has created for me and if I play the kick there you can see that coming through but if I play the snare that also comes through the same output. In the mixer, that's because they're all set to the same output, one and two. You can click on those outputs and choose anything up to 31, 32 for stereo outputs with, with Superior Drummer. With Easy Drummer, now, one explanation for you, because I've got Superior Drummer and I upgraded, I, I access Easy Drummer through Superior now, I haven't actually got Easy on this computer, but I've got a screen dump for you of its mixer for you. Again, there's output in yellow where it all says track one. If you clicked on that, you could choose multiple outputs and it would give each track its own output from one to eight or one to 10, whatever it decides to default to. But it's that simple, same process as with Superior. In Cubase, if you bring up by hitting F11, bring up your list of VST instruments, you can see I've got Superior Drummer there. This little box with an arrow in it right next to the E button that brings it up is a Activate All Outputs option. If you select that, you will now see all of these outputs have now become active. And if I bring Superior Drummer back up, we should find my kick is coming out of one and two. My snare, if I set that snare top to three and four and hit play, you can see the snare top is coming out of three and four. There's a bit of bleed coming through to one and two there, but you can see that is all you need to do along here, along the bottom. You can set them to any of the one to 32. So there's a real scope there to uh, really root things wherever you want, really, to then process them in your DAW properly. That's really handy. For the process uh, of this tutorial, I'm only going to be using a stereo out there because it's irrelevant in terms of this mixing. But obviously, if you're mixing your own songs you're going to want to activate all outputs so that you have full control over every instrument and you can EQ and compress it properly so that it's perfect. Moving on now to uh, Easy Drummer, I suppose the first question is if you haven't got any 
drum VST yet is whether you buy Easy Drummer or you want to go straight on to Superior. And what it comes down to really is how much control you want. Um, as I said, I've not got Easy Drummer installed anymore because I've got it within Superior Drummer. This is a screen dump of the Drum Kit from Hell plugin. You would need to buy that if you're going to go for a metal kit. The default kit that comes with Easy Drummer is a rock kit and it's okay, but really to open up the really good sounds you need to buy the Drum Kit from Hell plugin. You're looking at about £100 or $150 I think for the two, which is really good and I promise you for that money you are not going to get better sounds close that because as I say within Superior I can access the sounds as you see here drum kit from hell is from easy drummer so if you do upgrade you still have access to that, that kit that you've bought previously so that's that's good now what's good about easy drummer is the quality of the sounds and that kick that's a dry unprocessed kick really really powerful you've got four or five different options here they're quite different so you do get some different options and they're good quality same with the snare you've got about eight different snares there and they are good quality sounds the downside is if we look at say these toms there's only one option per tom they're good quality sounds but you've only got the one option and with the cymbals again they're really good sounding, but you've only got two or three options per per set. This is how this one works. You've got your drum kit and you would choose from these drop down arrows which sound you want to play from each one. You can choose to turn them off as well if you want. So they're quality, but there's not the variation. The other downside is that these aren't really raw sounds, I believe. I mean, if we look at these kick, they're called, as you see, damped, extreme EQ, extreme EQ, etc., etc. These have been processed. I believe there's EQ and some compression on them from the sound of them. They're too good to be just raw. So if you're looking for the full control over a drum kit, you're not going to get that with Easy Drummer because these have been pre-processed a bit. So out of the box, it sounds great. But for someone who really wants to get their teeth into doing things from scratch, this may not be for you and you may want to move on to Superior Drummer. So that's a quick overview of Easy for you. If you then want to double your money spend to £300 and get Superior Drummer with Metal Foundry, then uh, this is going to be the tutorial for you to see if uh, it's really what you're going to want. So on to Superior Drummer, the default kit you get when you buy the program is this New York Avatar kit, named after the studio where it's recorded. This is really a rock kit, it's very good quality sounds. Don't get many more options than with something like the drum kit from Hell, you see there's a few kicks. Uh, there's only a couple of options per tom. You do get some more cymbal options, quite a lot actually, and they're all very good sounds, as are the snares. These are completely raw though, unlike Drum Kit from Hell, so you really have all the scope you want to, to work with them. Over on the right here is where you can see something like this envelope. You can change the attack and the decay and what have you, the notes. So you can do cymbal chokes and all that sort of thing. You can change the pitch. This is all stuff you can't do in Easy Drummer. And then you also have the all important mixer window. If I get a uh, groove started, they've got preset MIDI. This is where Superior Drummer really shines because we've got all the different microphones. We've got the kick, the internal kick, the outside of the kick, a sub for the kick, the snare tops, snare bottom, uh, different mics for the snare, the toms, the overheads and different room mics as well. So I'll stop that now. We have a lot of great control here. You also have within each channel strip for each microphone you have bleed options. You can turn on bleed here for say something like a rack tom and decide how much volume wise you're going to want to uh, have coming through there. So it's more than realistic obviously you wouldn't have this sort of control over bleed in real life it's brilliant though because it allows you to eliminate any problems you would otherwise have in real life but still maintain realism of the sound of the room and the space it works really really well you also while we're on the mixer window I'll show you here you have five different inserts you can use an EQ filter gate compression and a transient shaper as I mentioned earlier these are not great I think even if you you have a 
DAW like Cubase, the stock plugins in Cubase are better than these. However, um, I th I've seen the fashion on YouTube, certainly for people giving out presets, is using these inserts so that people can just load up the preset and have a good sound. So that is what I'm going to be showing you later. If you do want to use these and do just want to use one stereo out for simplicity, it is possible to get a decent sounding kit out of them, but uh, you have to break some of the rules. For example, uh, with this EQ, it's a five band EQ and it's okay, but the Q isn't brilliant. So you may find that you need to stack two EQs on top of each other to really get the uh, sort of exact shaping that you want. Now, normally I think people would say that's bad practice. If you're having to stack two EQs, especially for something like waves, for example, then you're, you're doing something wrong. But in something like this, they are very transparent in their favor. So it doesn't show up too much if you do that. And they're quite low on the CPU power. So you can stack them and you do need to stack them to get real full control. One thing I did like about them, I've heard is a big complaint to people. If we look at something like this filter, you've got, say, a high pass filter that you, and, and it also has a low pass as well. That, that looks great on the surface of it, but if you look at this dial, although it gives you a low of 20 hertz and a high of 20k, there's no numbers in between, and there's very little in the way of numbers on this graphical representation here. On the face of it, it's very bad because you think, well, how the, how the hell am I going to get accurate sound processing without having these sounds here? But I soon found that that's actually great in a way because it makes you rely purely on your ears. You're not looking at the numbers. You're having to just listen to your ears and make a judgment purely on what you think sounds good. And uh, that's really good practice. So I'm not actually too bothered that they haven't put the numbers here. As I say, in terms of doing this properly recording an album, I wouldn't use these presets, uh, these inserts myself. But in terms of making a kit, it was a, it was a good exercise to do. And I, I recommend trying it yourself. That's all I need to say on these inserts for now. We'll cover them in more detail when I go on to the presets in part two of the episode. For now, there's one thing I really want to cover which is vital for using Superior Drummer well, and that is a feature called X-Drum. Now, this is a brilliant feature. It's not realistic in the slightest, but it's a brilliant feature which you really do need to, to get your head around and use to get a really good sounding kit. What X-Drum is, is it allows you to add instruments to the kit, and more importantly, add them so they stack and play at the same time. Now you may think on the face of it that sounds a bit rubbish, but if you think about something like the snare, whenever we play a normal snare drum, the snare is infamous as being the, the instrument that sounds a bit crap to start with and needs a lot of processing. You need to add your compression, your reverb, really heavy EQ. You often need to double up on the snare uh, using parallel compression. And that's exactly where X drum works really well because you can double up on this snare sound right from the off. Not only that, something like the snare where you want different characteristics coming through, a snare has you know, an initial crack and it also has has the snare rattle as well. So you may find that you want the crack coming through from one snare and then you want the sustained rattle from another snare and if you mix these two together you get the best of both worlds. So it's really versatile. You can do the same with a kick. You can get the, the roomy outer kick sound of one kick drum and a really short sharp crack of another kick drum. Mix them together and there you have it, the exact sound that you wanted. It sounds very natural. It doesn't sound like you're doing this in the background. So you end up with really powerful sounding drums. So how to use this over here on the right where you've got the next X drum drop down. We have an option for new. So I click that and it brings me up a new instrument which defaults to a, a kick drum. But I'm going to do this with a snare to, to show you how, how this can work really well. You can choose what kit you want to add your sound library from. Um, as you see, we'll come on to Metal Foundry in part two. I'm going to stick with Avatar for now. And you can choose what instrument you want to be using as your X drum. I'm going to choose a snare. My initial snare over here, Ludwig Black Beauty, that's a classic sounding snare. I'm going to keep that on there. You can hear that's got a nice crack, but it's also got quite a good snare rattle as well. I'm going to add into that. I don't want any much more rattle. What I want is something with a good crack to uh, increase that transient and help it cut through and then have a bit more power. So something like the Rogers Wood here, I believe. It's got a bit higher. I'll try even that 510 GMS. That's what I'm looking for. A short, sharp crack. 
it's a bit high as well, so I'm going to reduce its pitch a bit. That's what I'm looking for. Under mapping, mapping tab up here, if I click on any of my instruments here, you can see the uh, orange button is the on the keyboard showing me what note the MIDI assigned is to. So it's really simple, really straightforward to use this. Now, if I check out my snare that I'm using, I've got my main snare sound there. These blue ones are for expressions. You can see there are expressions down the right hand side, but the orange one is the primary hit, and that's what I'm interested in. So that is a D1. On my X drum over here, you can see they're all white, they've not been assigned. The orange center one, my main sound, I'm going to drag that down to D1 as well. And when I let go, it should warn me that it's already assigned to another drum, which is great. I know I want to join that. You can replace it or you can cancel, but a join it will mean that it's now assigned both. If you look over here, or over the members section, we have got my X drum and we've got my snare drum, my original snare drum. So by playing D1, it's playing them both together. And I don't know if you can hear that there. That does not sound in any way unnatural. It's really, really good. Further to that, down here in the bottom right, as you can see here, member velocity, I can choose, for example, if I like the sound of the uh, GMS uh, at low volume, but I prefer the sound of the Black Beauty at high volume with not so much of the GMS, I can pick the GMS and say, never let it go beyond, say, 100 in volume. That will mean, regardless of how heavy the hit is, it's only ever going to play at a maximum of 100, even if this drum, as you can see, is set to 127 to play at maximum volume. So you get real, real options here in terms of mixing your drums together, even at different volumes. So at lower volume, you may want something that's got a bit more of the, the snare rattle, isn't very powerful. And then at the higher volumes, you may want something where the real crack comes through. I'm going to bring that back up because I really want that. So when they play together, um, if I go back over to this window, down in the bottom right here, you can preview all of the instruments that you've got. And you can see MIDI nodes down here. A MIDI node is what I've created to link those two snares. And if I play that, that's playing both of them at the same time. That's a nice crack. If I take the drum, the X drum off, and play that for you to hear, that's the Black Beauty on its own. And then with another drum, that doesn't sound at all unnatural. It's a brilliant, brilliant addition to this program. And one you can use and think of using for anything. If you want to make your toms sound particularly loud, I often find floor toms sound a bit hollow compared to the rack toms. So that's another trick for using them on there. Or with your cymbals, you may find that uh, one or two of the cymbals are very low in volume compared to some of the others. Combine them together when you hit one. Really, really useful and really advise using that. So you're gonna see me using that uh, for the presets that are coming Coming up in part two so uh, I hope this episode is uh, I know it's very beginner but uh, it has hopefully helped you make a decision if you're looking to buy or upgrade your VST drums please pop over to part two where I will show you how to make your kit sound particularly metal thanks very much